It's no tornado. Nine times out of ten, it's a false alarm. Another day, another movie succeeding as a result of not being infested with woke shit. Isn't it beautiful? Probably didn't see this coming, but Twister, a film that was okay at best, has somehow gotten a standalone sequel, and it's pretty good. It's also a box office success, but given that Garfield outdid Furiosa, that's not that surprising. There's absolutely no woke shit to be found in this movie, not of any kind, and that's in this day and age almost a guarantee a movie is going to do well. This one follows a new generation of storm chasers. In this case, new generation is not a terrible thing. In an attempt to reduce the intensity of tornadoes, which oddly enough is not the same rehashed plot. It's similar, but the approach is completely different. It's not a weird personal vendetta this time. The lead, Kate, played by Daisy Edgar Jones, was already a storm chaser. And if it wasn't the same title with an S added, even though that had more than one twister as well, you really wouldn't think about the first movie that much. I mean, it only has like one reference, I think, no real cameos to be had. It's almost as if it stands on its own. Completely unheard of for a modern sequel. And director Lee Isaac Chung even said he didn't want the movie to be used as a lecture for climate change. You fucking nuts! For those watching 20 to 50 years in the future, this is 2024. Maybe it's because if you're watching a movie about trying to make tornadoes disappear, you probably don't want to think about that shit. However, it does beg the question, what about the first movie, the end of the first movie, the events of that movie, and it's not explained. I think they were doing the same thing in that, but unlike what some other critics have said, I still don't look at it as the same movie. It's definitely similar, but I think there's enough differences to justify its existence. Let's have a look at the opening in which we have our new Storm Chasers. Aside from Kate, the only relevant one is Javi, played by Anthony Ramos. You'll find out why soon. But the cast is likable enough. Not groundbreaking, but perfectly serviceable. Yeah, yeah, just chase weather okay. around. Yes, we'll be careful, I promise. Like I said, they're gonna try to reduce the intensity using movie weather logic, but it unexpectedly becomes an EF5, meaning it won't work, and everybody's killed aside from Javi and Kate. So as far as the scene goes, it is pretty good, but compared to the original, it's not as impactful. Aside from not being out there by choice, she saw her dad literally get picked up, clearly more traumatizing than this, not to mention the scar on her leg is completely pointless. It appears in one other scene and affects nothing, but oddly enough, I kind of prefer what the movie does with it. We know the drill, traumatized, overcome being traumatized, make mistakes because of traumatized, and while that does sound a bit cliche, the first movie had shit like this. You've never seen it miss this house and miss that house and come after you. Yeah, I don't know if they were getting into some Jaws 4 shit, but I'll take being traumatized any day. It may not be quite as horrific, but it's still pretty bad, and in my opinion, a good enough reason to call it quits. But that's not what happens, as Kate and Javi reunite five years later. You can probably see the events unfolding already, but before that, we get this hilarious joke. New York's great. Oh, I could hear. People are nice. <laughs> So, as always, in a situation after a tragedy, the returning friend has a proposition to do something about the thing that caused that tragedy, but because it was traumatic, she must spend a bit of time saying no and good luck. Basically, it's a one-week proposition, in which his new team is testing a new tornado scanning system, and Kate's the only one for the job. Yeah, I don't know why she's so great, but they seem to agree. We're then introduced to some rivals, like in the first movie, being YouTube celebrity storm chasers led by Tyler Owens, played by Glenn Powell. But this time, they're not unredeemable assholes. That's not the direction it's going in, and as expected, Glenn Powell will steal the movie, as Kate isn't that fascinating. How boring is not usually a problem for me, Kate. Well, there is still Scott, Javi's partner. Just looking at him should give you an idea of where his character's going. But as you know, given it's early on in the movie, things can't go to planned. Meaning Kate must have a convenient panic attack fucking up the whole thing. But that's okay as the effects are quite good, meaning it's by no means a bad scene. And this allows Tyler to get ahead and do this. But like I said, Tyler is not going to be any kind of antagonist, he's far too charismatic. There is Marshall Riggs, played by David Bourne, a storm par investor, but he's hardly really in the movie, so they kind of just skip the antagonist this time. 
Anyway, upon heading back out, things do go a bit differently. This time, Tyler and his team do the opposite of what Kate does, and inevitably miss out. But again, things don't go to plan, the tornado becoming an EF3, and in the end, Kate makes the noble decision to head to the Ravage Town to see who needs help. There we find out Tyler's team are not a bunch of assholes. If they were, it'd be overly apparent by now, as they use the merchandise profits to aid tornado victims. However, it would seem that Marshall Riggs is not as noble, purchasing tornado damaged land at low prices and reselling for exorbitant amounts. Shocking. But just because Tyler somewhat angrily called this out does not mean they can't go out the same night, mainly for some bonding at the local rodeo. But like the original, a fun event is not just there to waste time. I'm okay with that, as something has to happen, but what is it with the stupidity in this scene? We have an incredibly stupid couple. I mean, they're really stupid. You hear that? Yeah, now the power's out. No tornado. Wait, I don't want to have to give you a bad review. Go, 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 go. Giving us a cool death to watch. Don't quite know what this guy was thinking. He had plenty of time to climb in the pool and get to safety, but I guess not. It's another good scene, and with that we get to the one cliche I wish they'd left out. That being me telling you to hit the like button and subscribe for more. No, actually Kate and Job begin to an argument about rigs, in which Kate says, you don't know what it's like to lose somebody. In which Javi says, you were just trying to land a grant for your science project. And of the two mean things said, only Javi is wrong. In which Kate runs away to a location that will eventually advance the plot. I really hate when movies do this. It's an overly contrived way to create tension that isn't there. That's the case if even only one side is wrong. But to have them both say something dickish and only expect us to be mad at one of them, it's a plot device I can't stand that I wish they just stop doing. Speaking of plot device, that's kind of what Javi is. He's not pointless, but the movie could have gone on without him. He doesn't really need to be there. The other storm chasers aren't that fascinating either, but it makes sense why they'd exist. Javi is the definition of a plot device, and as you'll see, they don't really know what to do with him. Tyler, on the other hand, is the charismatic character that we care about, and after running away in despair to her mother's farm, a scene that does a good job breaking things up, the pacing of this movie is actually quite good, he shows up pretty quickly to advance their relationship status, and eventually advance the plot. Not gonna bother you, He's not corner. staying. He's staying. You can call me Kathy. Kate initially refuses to retry the experiment for reasons involving guilt and trauma, but eventually agrees, and at this point there's no denying this movie is slightly unfocused. Like I said, the pacing is good, but it does seem to be a bit more about them at times than anything else. Given they did basically reuse the first movie's premise, it shouldn't be that surprising. But it doesn't ruin the movie by any means, and despite having the same premise, the plot is still completely different. Also in the same vein as not cramming climate change down your throat, Tyler is at no point put in his place for being a man. Given he never really did anything wrong, that's okay. You're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for Javi, but he was really only a plot device. Speaking of which, after a scene oozing with toxic masculinity, Javi decides to rejoin the movie. Obviously, only he was in the wrong. And upon giving her his scanning data, they're able to hypothesize a change in the environment. Basically meaning it will work. Only problem is, to have a climax, something has to go wrong, and in this case, it's the twister hitting an oil refinery and catching fire. Literally oil, they could have made that the antagonist so easily. They really could have just killed off Javi and Scott, some tragedy in the final act would be nice. And let's be honest, they were kind of useless. But they get out, and Javi finally realizes Scott is a dick. Could have at least given him a memorable death, like the first movie did with the antagonist, but no, we just get this scene. Stupid. Villains are not really the movie's strong suit. I mean, that's the last we hear from him. What about Riggs? They head to the local town to help people, and I know the first movie isn't really blatantly referenced, but we have a scene with a screen being blown away during a horror movie. Not only is that completely unnecessary, but the first movie had The Shining. It's fucking Jack Nicholson. That was perfect. You can't outdo that. Also, the finale that is still quite good is not as good as the first movie. I contribute that to two things. One, nobody has anything to do but Kate. The rest kind of just hold out in the theater and not die. And the other issue is nobody dies. I mean, we had an asshole, a pointless side character, four disposable characters, that other guy who was just there. Maybe a fatality would have just killed the mood. I don't know. We only see unknowns getting sucked in and needed something extra. Stupid. It's funny how the intro and the ending are the weakest parts compared to the original. That's too bad, but as a whole, it's still superior. 
So like I said, Kate braves the storm alone, sends the thing into the tornado, and after a relatively tense scene, all seems to be well. Everybody's beyond impressed. You're brilliant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I love you. Everyone is super stoked on me. And upon cutting ahead a bit, you would think her and Tyler would be a thing by now, but no. Instead, he shows up upon her heading back to New York, and given that his truck is not supposed to be there, and the fact that he almost just says goodbye and leaves, this is incidentally really funny. What's going on? Your car. But he doesn't leave, they likely get together. Obviously, she's not giving up storm chasing. Happy ending, that's it. So, that was Twisters, and it's about what it should be. <laughs> to avoid any confusion, this is not some kind of amazing movie you have to see. I don't particularly love it, I'm not incredibly grateful that I didn't miss it. But if you enjoy the first movie, which again was just okay, you'll probably like this a bit more. The finale isn't as good, a lot of characters are not the best, and by comparison, the plot is relatively similar. But in the same vein, it's not. There are enough differences to justify it. I don't know what happened to the events of the first movie, but given this is about sending things into twisters to decrease their intensity, I don't really see why it matters. The fact is, it's a fun movie. Glenn Powell is especially likable, and despite having the opportunity to cram in a whole lot of nonsense you don't want to see, even climate change is left out, and that's because nobody watching a dumb action movie wants to see that. It still has problems, room for improvement, the plot could have been a bit more focused, but it's definitely good enough for what it is. This along with The Fall Guy are attempting to keep movies alive, but Twisters did actually do well, and that is a damn good thing. I can't guarantee you'll love it, but if you want something that resembles remote common sense, I would... not give it a watch. I'm the Analyst, and remember kids, if you're involved in a tragedy that leaves only you and one other alive, they were probably affected too. So, you've made it to the end. That's an impressive feat indeed. Since you managed that, I guess check out the gaming channel, in which I cover a variety of gaming topics, like analysis videos, such as this one. If you're into that, then press the link in the description. It's that simple.